Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I am bringing you a champion guide on a cult brawler. Now, sorry I didn't get this video out yesterday, but I was having some technical difficulties, so this is actually the third time filming this. Hopefully it goes through, we'll see. Also, stick around till the end of the video. I do have an exciting announcement to make about future upcoming content, hopefully, so stay tuned and we'll get into that. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the build. So, cult brawler definitely needs sustainability he does not have a very high base defense at all as you can see 826 here is his base defense very low so what i have him in here is a lifesteal set along with masha led will be coming into clan boss with me for leech and that's really going to help him sustain himself keep him in the fight longer so that's why i have him in one set lifesteal one set speed and teamed with masha led should be able to keep him alive pretty well Let's go ahead and see here the build. I've got him in a weapon. This lifesteal gives 19 speed, 5% HP. So I do want him going as fast as possible to get those poisons racking up. On the helmet, I've got 17 speed, 5% crit, 8% defense. On the shield, we've got 30 accuracy, 7 speed, 22% defense. So I went for this shield specifically because I want him to get as much defense as possible because as I said with the low base it's really hard to get him up there. And then I've got him in 6 star defense percent life steal gloves. These gave me 12% HP as well as 34 accuracy so very good gloves. The chest is a 5 star defense percent with some accuracy, 21 accuracy here, 5 speed. And the boots. We've got Speed, Lifesteal, these gave me 14% crit damage, which didn't really matter, but 7% HP and 14 accuracy is very good. Then we have a Defense Ring that's giving us 15% defense as well as 7% HP, and that's a 6 star. We've got a 6 star Defense Amulet that's giving us 23 accuracy. And I do want to put him in, an, in a uh, Defense Banner, that would help out a lot, but for now I do have him in an Accuracy Banner that is giving us 11 speed as well as a little bit of base defense. Let's go ahead and look at the build here. The defense is only coming up to 3300 right now, even with all of that built into it. The banner would bring it closer to, like if I got a six star defense banner, we'd be looking more like a 3700 range, which would be a lot better for Ultra Nightmare. But this is where we're at right now. 37k HP is pretty solid. We got him at 211 speed, which is great. Uh, crit rate, crit damage don't matter for him, and 254 accuracy. So once I take him out of that accuracy banner, I'll probably throw him into a different weapon or something with some more accuracy on it, and try and get him right around the 230 mark. So let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at his skills. So his A1. Attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. So uh, that books up to a 60% chance, 65 with the Sniper Mastery. And so 65% chance for poison on A1 is pretty solid. Uh, these hit most of the time and it pairs very well with his passive. Let's go ahead and look at the A2 here. It does a lot, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically does different stuff depending on how many debuffs are on him. This isn't a great move, and honestly, he'd probably be a little better if he never used it, but I, it's it's all right. It can get him some healing, which is good, get him an extra turn to play some more poisons, so definitely not terrible, just not the best thing in the world. I did not book the cooldown because I don't want him using it that much. I got lucky that uh, I did not get that, and if I had been luckier, I would have not gotten any rolls in the A2 at all. That's how it is. And then finally, the passive places a 2.5% poison debuff on this champion for four turns at the start of each turn. So he's poisoning himself, which seems a little strange, but it does work with his Curse Eater ability. So the more debuffs he has, the more extra stuff he gets to do. And then once he's ascended to three stars, he has a 70% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff on a random enemy for four turns at the start of each turn. So 75% chance with the sniper ability, and four turns is absolutely insane. No one else puts on a debuff for four turns that I know of. And so, actually that's not true. I believe Killian can do it now with a block cooldown skills. 
but still, uh, four turn poison is just nuts. They stack up really well. He does great poison damage. One of the top two in the game for sure. I think only Frozen Banshee can really compete with him on auto. So uh, those are the skills. Like I said, uh, I would try not to book the A2 at all. It is unnecessary as long as you can get the books to get the debuff chance on the A1, you'll be looking good. So let's go ahead and take a look at the masteries here. So I've got them in the offense and support trees. So offense, standard line down to War Master. We're picking up Heart of Glory as well to do some extra damage when at full HP. And Life Drinker for a little more sustain. Then we're coming here, Accuracy, Accuracy, a little bit of turn meter boost from Arcane Celerity. This is going to be on a speed comp, so I'm not worried about turn meter increase. That actually helps us. And then Lore of Seal to get him a little bit more speed. Uh, Sniper to increase his poison chances. Evil Eye, if I bring him into other content, just lets him get a little bit more utility. And finally, Master Hexer to potentially get those poisons to a five turn poison, which would just be nuts. So those are the masteries. He's really a clan boss specialist, but uh, I am going to pull him into one dungeon here today where I think he can definitely do some work, and that is the dragon. So obviously he is better on stages 18 or 19 where they are not a good affinity against him. But stage 20, he is countered a little bit. Uh, that's okay though. So as you can see, I've got my pretty standard team here. I'm bringing in Tayrell over Stagnite just to make the run go a little bit faster. Um, but basically he is off affinity here, so he's going to be taking the brunt of the attacks. Reliquary Tender and Apothecary can keep him up pretty well though. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. He isn't a very tanky build, so he can take a couple of hits. But uh, you've all seen going through with this team uh, or something similar a million times in Dragon. So what I'm actually going to do here is a little bit different. I'm just going to cut through the waves, come back into the boss fight, because that is where a cold brawler can really show off his skills. So here we are in the dragon, guys. Uh, as you can see, he is starting to build up poisons for us already. He's got one here. So a cult brawler, even though he is the off affinity, can come in and kind of stack these up for us. Even if he gets weak hits, his passive can start to build them up. And uh, that's the cool thing about him. He's not going to go down here in the actual boss portion of the fight because we've got plenty of support. And as you can see, even though he's weak affinity, we've already got five 5% 5 poisons on him. Now we've got six, they last a long time, four turns, five turns on this one because we got the Master Hexer. So we're just gonna be chunking through his HP. As soon as he gets those purple bars up, we're gonna be knocking him down. And we should be looking pretty good here. As you can see, the waves definitely ran a little bit long with him in here. Uh, we do not have a whole lot of damage with this team, so uh, it's not a quick run. But I think we're going to be looking right around the 5 minute, 15 second range. The poisons are falling down a little bit now, which uh, is, like I said, a product of him being the off affinity. But I think we'll still be able to get through the purple. There we go. We're already back up to 5 of them. So let's see. Is that enough? That Warmaster proc should do it. Boom. We get through the purple. And that is what he's doing for us here. So he's definitely not the optimal choice. I would probably even choose Kale over him to come in here. Uh, but he can definitely do it. And as you can see, now we've got the debuff bar completely stacked pretty much. So uh, it's all just RNG. You know, neither of his attacks have a 100% chance to uh, inflict the poison. But since they last so long, they definitely end up stacking up and doing a lot overall. So that's a Cold Brawler and Dragon, guys. But let's go ahead and take a look at him in the clan boss. So we're going to go ahead and jump into Ultra Nightmare here. And I'm going to show you my normal team here would be Jareg uh, as my lead, and then Arbiter, Masha Led, uh, Rotos, and Frozen Banshee. But I want Frozen Banshee to be able to swap out with a Cold Brawler if we're going in against a Force Affinity boss. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in here. Alrighty, let me take it off of auto. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn meter boost. We are going to go ahead and get the leech applied. Oh, right. have to click my own people. And then... Um, Let's see, I'll just go with the A1 because I don't really want to put the heal reduction on him. And boom, we've got a five turn poison off the bat. So that's already basically, I think, 250,000 damage that's going to tick on him. 
So it's just absolutely insane the way the numbers stack up. And then we go for the A1, we get another one. That's three turns, that's another 150,000. If I'm correct, I think Poison's tick for 50,000 on Ultra Nightmare. So uh, he stacks them up really quickly as we're going through. I should have used the A2 there on Rotos, but that's fine. Going to go ahead and keep building up our turn meter. Just hitting as much as possible, getting all those poisons on there, stacking them up. We've already got four going, got the decrease attack on. And so we're just basically going to continue like this. I'm going to go ahead and throw it on auto and we will see how far we get. Finally got the decrease defense going. Go ahead and reapply this, get us some speed. So I'm going to click it on auto and we will see how we come out the other end. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop it here and show you guys an issue that you can have with a cult brawler. So Jareg, as you know, does not have a 100% chance to place his decrease attack, and so it has fallen off, but we now have 10 debuffs stacked up here, which means he cannot reapply it. He's about to come back through with a big hit and probably wipe my entire team. So uh, I think we're only going to be looking at about 16 and a half, maybe 17 million damage. But let's see how it goes here. So even if Jarek does manage to come back around and hit with the A1, I don't think we can apply it. And yep, there we go. It got resisted anyways. But this is going to be the end for us right here as soon as he takes a turn. Boom, slams us all down. Rotos is the only survivor. He's going off though, getting us a little bit more. And that's going to be it. One last hit, and he is done. So 17.5 million, not bad. A Cold Brawler coming in there with 7 million of that. He was the most damage. So that's what he brings us in Ultra Nightmare. You do run a little bit of a risk, as I said. If you get too many poisons on there and the attack down falls off, then you are screwed. But, I mean, that's kind of the risk you take when you want to push your damage as far as it can go. So 17.52, I believe that is... Uh, yeah, it's a 4 key. It's right on the lower edge of 4 key. I think you need 17.5 per key. So a Cult Brawler is definitely in-game viable. If I had him with some more defense and uh, the attack down hadn't fallen off, that could have easily gone above 20 million. But uh, yeah, that's it for a Cult Brawler, guys. So I did want to say at the end of this video here, uh, thank you guys, first of all, for 200 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. And that being said, I want to interact with you guys some more. Um, a lot of the bigger raid channels do a lot with their community, you know, like Hell Hades does account takeovers. Uh, they all do shard pulls, stuff like that. And so basically, I want to start doing stuff like that. So if you want some shard pulls, let's say, and you want those on video, or you want something kind of like what Hell Hades does with an account takeover, where I would come into your account and kind of look it over and see if I could help progress you in an area that you're having trouble with. And uh, even if you're a lower level account, let's say because he normally comes in on accounts with lots of silver, that's what he needs to move it along. But let's say you're a lower level account, you're just looking to improve a little bit. I could come in, make a video, give you some advice on how you can move forward, what you could do, and see if there's anything I could do in that time to help you out. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, please join the Discord. I'll have a link for it in the description down below. And you can talk to me about it. We can get it rolling. Also, like I said, thank you for 200 subscribers, guys. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And uh, thanks for watching.